the caregiver, she equals the professional caregiver. As a caregiver, there are different care settings, and the different care setting, your role as a caregiver is different. Personal tasks are the routine activities that we do to take care of ourselves. They include bathing, eating, and other self-care tasks that keep us clean, healthy, and well. The client receives specific personal care services depending on their needs and preferences. Activity of daily living or ADLs. ADLs are the tasks we do to meet the basic needs of our everyday life. Now, what's instrumental activity of daily living? IIDL. These are routine activities around the home or in the community. Some home care aids might also assist with these household tasks. Okay, next we are going to see a level of support. Every client needs a different level of support with personal care tasks. There are five levels of support on a DCG's care plan. They are independent, supervision, limited assistant, extensive assist, and total dependence. They are on your page, uh, in here, independent, supervision, limited assistance, extended assistance, total dependence. Okay, so the next one that we are going to see are observing, documenting, and reporting. Observing changes from baseline. A client's physical, mental, and emotional condition may improve or decline over time. You need to know the client baseline and monitor carefully to recognize any changes. After we observe, we need to document. Documenting observation means keeping a written record of any changes or concerns about the client. You must learn the documentation policies in your own care setting. The documentation is over here. There are different kind of documentation. There's the subjective documentation, objective documentation, and like that. In the way you document, make sure you you talk to your uh, care facility how you document. Usually, you need to have a description, action, and and a response. Remember to always follow the specific rules and procedures around documenting and reporting in your care setting. Okay, the next one we talk about was professional conduct and boundaries. You, as a good caregiver, you always need to have a good attendance. The client, the rest of the care team, and your employee rely on you to come to work on time and scheduled. Organize your personal life, such as transportation and child care, so you can keep your work obligated. And uh, emergencies and time offs. For those times when you are absent or late because of an emergency, please call your employer as soon as possible. If you are sick, you know, stay home from work. If you have symptoms of contagious illnesses, such as vomiting, diarrhea, or fever, Please uh, call to your workplace and let them know. And your job performance. To provide the best care possible, stay focused on your job while you are at work. Make sure you understand your assigned duties and create a plan to get them all done. Preparing yourself mentally and physically for work each day will help you to do your job more well. So when you come to work, you have to follow your care setting uh, procedures. Usually these are like standards, how your hair should be, uh, no jewelry, shoes has to be comfortable, clothing appropriate for the job, no perfumes, fingernails short, hygiene clean. This is all, almost everywhere you go, you need to keep uh, these rules. Now let's talk about professional boundaries. 
Professional boundaries are the limits to your relationship with a client. You need to set boundaries all the time. Think about caregiving as your job and try to separate it from your personal life. So spending time, spending your free time with a client or sharing personal information or work complaint with a client, giving special attention to one client over another, these are warning signs. This you oh you're not keeping the boundaries at this time if you are doing this. Part of your job each day is to maintain your professional boundaries. Now let's see about preparing for emergencies. Protecting client safety is a daily priority for a home care aid. In an emergency situation, you are responsible for keeping the client safe and prevent accidents. You know, practicing good safety habits can prevent accident and injury. Whenever there is an emergency, call 911 right away and call your provider or manager at the same time. These are uh, some of the emergency things that you can see on your page, I believe 95. And bleeding that will not stop, breathing problems, changing mental status, just pain, pain, choking, coughing, fainting, head or spine injury, and it's listed on here. And um, a stroke and heart attack are common medical emergencies among older adults. So it's, it's good to know the signs of each. This one talk about the heart attack and symptoms. Pain or discomfort in the chest, lightheadedness, nausea, vomiting, jaw, neck or back pain, discomfort or pain in the arm, shoulder, shortness of breath, indigestion, heartburn, extreme fatigue. These are the heart attack symptoms. And these are for the stroke signs and symptoms. If somebody has a numbness or weakness on one side of the body, confusion or trouble speaking or understanding, trouble seeing, trouble walking or loss of balance, severe headache with no known cause. So there is an acronym B FAST. B stands for balance, E is for eyes, blurred eye vision. F stands for face, one side of the face dropping. A is for arm, arm or leg weakness, one side. S is for speech, speech difficulty. T is for time, time to call ambulance immediately if you see the others. As a caregiver, all of you has to be prepared for fire and disaster. This can happen at any time, even in your first week on the job. From day one, think about how you would respond to a medical emergency, like fire, earthquake, flood, power. Adult family homes, enhanced service facilities, and assisted living facilities have plans, policies, and procedures for responding to emergency and disaster. Make sure you know the emergency evacuation procedure for your care setting. You also need to know the location of telephone, fire extinguishers, first aid keys, flashlight, and emergency lights. The appropriate first response to a fire emergency depends on the on the situation. But the, but you need to know race. R stands for rescue. Remove everyone from the immediate vicinity. A is for alarm, sound alarm or call assistance. C is confine the area, you have to confine it, and close doors and windows, and E is extinguish. Extinguish a fire if it is confined to a small area, if you feel confident to, to do so. And severe heat, this happens usually on the summer, can cause illness and death, especially if it is above 90. It's especially dangerous for people who are older, have health problems, or take certain medications. Home care aides must know how to help clients stay cool and recognize symptoms of heat-related illness and respond in emergency situation. These are very important on your book on page 97. It's listed how to stay cool, how to stay hydrated, and symptoms of heat-related illness and heat stroke. 
it's listed and the last step if you know all those things the last step is calling 911 so you have to remember when you're calling 911 you have to stay calm and give the address and the nearest major street or intersection where you are stay on the phone and follow the directions of the dispatch we finished lesson one now we go to lesson two which is mandatory reporting and preventing mistreatment all caregivers are mandatory reporters you, you should report if you see any or if you see or recognize any signs of abuse neglect or exploitation Abuse means the willful action or inaction that inflicts injury, unreasonable confinement, intimidation, punishment on a vulnerable adult. There are different kinds of uh, abuses, sexual abuse, that includes any form of non-sexual conduct, non-consensual sexual conduct, including but not limited to unwanted or inappropriate touching, rape, sodomy, sexual coercion, sexual explicit photography, and sexual harassment. There are some signs that are listed on your book for, uh, for this kind. Signs of sexual abuse that are listed on here. The next one is a physical abuse. Physical abuse means the willful action of inflicting bodily injury or physical treatment. Physical abuse includes, but is not limited to, striking with or without an object, slapping, pinching, choking, kicking, shoving, or, or prodding. Signs of physical abuse are also listed in your book in here. Mental abuse. Mental abuse means a willful verbal or non-verbal action that threatens or humiliates, harasses, coerces, intimidates, isolates, unreasonably confines or punishes a vulnerable adult. Mental abuse may include ridiculing, yelling, or, or swearing. These are the signs on your book 104. These are signs of mental abuse. Next one is personal exploitation. It means an act of forcing, compelling, or exerting undue influence over a vulnerable adult, causing the vulnerable adult to act in a way that's inconsistent with the relevant past behavior, or causing the vulnerable adult to perform services for the benefit of another. Financial exploitation. It's it is illegal or improper use of, use of the property, income, resource, or trust fund of the world adult. There are examples in science symptoms are listed in your book. Okay, let's talk about neglect. Neglect is another kind of abuse. It's when a person with a responsibility for an over adult fails to provide necessary goods or services, or fails to provide physical or mental harm, or puts a vulnerable adult in danger. These are sign examples in science are listed in your book again. Abandonment is another one. It means uh, action or inaction by a person or entity with a duty of care for a vulnerable adult that leaves the vulnerable adult person without the means or ability to obtain necessary food, clothing, shelter, or health care. Abandonment is listed here in your book. It's good to understand these things. And self-neglect means a failure of a vulnerable adult who is not living in a facility to provide for themselves the goods and services necessary for their own physical or mental health, impairing their well-being. And finally, how do we make a report? You can make a report online or over the telephone. And the numbers are listed here, reporting by telephone is reported here. Online reporting, there's an online website uh, over here.
थैंक यू वेरी मच